Welcome back to Sports Tonight. Magic Mike joining us to talk a little NBA draft. It's tomorrow. Can you believe it already, it's Mike? It's crazy. It's already, it's already here, especially with all this Kawhi talk. It the most like it would... entertaining time of the year, too, in the NBA, you could argue. The offseason. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. The offseason. Okay, so you can't talk Spurs and almost in a related fashion draft without talking Kawhi. So first things first, Mike, what of Kawhi Leonard? It's interesting. I mean, what of Kawhi? It's going to be very interesting what the Spurs do, and I think it kind of feels like draft day is the time to make a move because that's when a lot of teams are active. That's when they're interested, and that's when you have the picks cycling around, all the GMs, all the front office people together, but they don't necessarily have to do anything on draft right. day. So it could be, okay, is an entertaining pick, is a dangling piece offered to them, something that could really appeal to the Spurs to get rid of a guy who's still a superstar, you know, Kawhi Leonard. What, top three, top five player in the yeah. league? So there's got to be something appealing to them, and I think the trade pieces have kind of centered around Boston or L.A. just because the Celtics have a lot of first-round picks. They have a lot of interesting young players. Same with the Lakers, Kyle Kuzma, a guy who's been thrown around. He was first-team all-rookie selection last yeah. year. So it has been those two teams that have centered around the talk for Kawhi, but I don't know, do the Spurs do something? They don't have the necessity of, like, the Cavs, where you know LeBron James will be gone. Kawhi is still under their control for right. one more year. So when you look at the specifics, Mike, which one of those, because you do hear Lakers, you do hear Celtics, Sixers you hear every once in a while, talk the last couple of days that the Suns might be interested, including the top overall pick. Of the deals that are out there, which one do you think fits the Spurs the best? Is there one? Well, I don't know if it, anything would fit the Spurs the best as much as you know, the Celtics or the Lakers, knowing that we have enough pieces that it would fit us the best, because those teams almost have the leverage. But the team that could fit the Spurs the best has to be the Celtics. They have as many as four first-round picks next year, depending on some protected sure. picks and some, some of the interesting intricacies of the NBA draft and future picks. But they have an arsenal of picks. They have a lot of young guys, like a Jason Tatum, who's coming off a terrific rookie year, double-digit point score, and they have depth behind him. So the Celtics could conceivably get rid of a guy like Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown and still have a lot of pieces left. If you're the Lakers, do you really gut your whole team for Kawhi and then maybe hope LeBron comes? Because if he doesn't, what do you have? Yeah. But I think a lot of folks would say that if Kawhi is going to L.A., then LeBron is going to join Kawhi in L.A. Leap. And then Paul George leap. is already kind of... You think it's a big if? You don't think it's automatic that if Kawhi is going to L.A., then LeBron would join him there with what the What is Lakers? LeBron looking for at this point? I, we don't really know. Yes, he wants yeah. a superstar. Yes, he wants some people around him. But does he want the spotlight of L.A.? Maybe. I mean, he can make his own empire wherever. We've, we've seen that. He can make his multimedia empire. He is autocracy. You know, he's the king. He can make that wherever. It could be Cleveland. It could be L.A. Yes, it certainly helps if he goes to L.A., but are the Spurs going to want what the Lakers have to offer? Do they have enough? I don't know if they do. Wait, Lonzo Ball, he's not going to come no. here. Yeah. You know, the Spurs aren't going to want Lonzo and Ball and to Lamar come to the Ball. Lakers. Yeah. Jenny, quick note about the Celtics here. This is how, how many resources they have. The Celtics could offer Jalen Brown, Terry Rozier, and a draft pick and kind of wait on that because they don't know what Kawhi is going to do after next year. So let's say they, they, they do that. They don't offer Jason Tatum. Let's say for some reason the Spurs take that offer. The Celtics could trot out Irving, Haywood, Leonard, Horford, and Tatum. Exactly. And they would have given away a, a, a package nice enough to, to, to lure Kawhi Leonard. It's crazy what they have available. Plus, right if now. you're the Spurs, maybe you're not thinking about this too much because you want a good deal. You're probably more comfortable trading him to the Eastern Conference than you are to the no West. Doubt That's about another that. potential team that takes a playoff spot from you. So let's assume the Spurs don't move from 18. Some reports that they were looking at, at maybe moving that, that pick at a high cross. They're looking for, for a nice little package. But let's say they stay at 18 in tomorrow's draft. Guys that you think would be good fits at 18. Well, assuming that Kawhi is, is gone, either this year or next year, you kind of need a wing. You need some one of that combo scorer who can also provide some rebounding depth. So there are a couple of names thrown around that could be going later in the high 20s to the late teens. All kind of wing, 6'7", six, 6'9", six, guys. Uh, Dominic DiVincenzo, who was here in the final four, yeah. called him the Big Ragu. You know, he's got the size, he can <laughs> shoot the three. Kevin Herter from Maryland is a name that has really shot up after the NBA Combine. And then, not, not to mention, not that DiVincenzo, who the Spurs spoke with at the Combine, his Villanova teammate, Amari Spellman. All these guys have some size. And you think, all right, if Rudy Gay is not coming back, if Kawhi is gone this year or next year, Maybe a swing type guy like that because, you know, your point guard depth is, is okay right now. And you do have a good point guard in Jante Murray. You have LaMarcus Aldridge to build around. It seems like that kind of bigger guard into forward combo is really what the Spurs need right now. I want to get your thoughts on Texas Tech guy who some people have 
maybe at 18 of the Spurs, Zaire Smith. Yeah, I mean, it's it's if you're looking for that build and that mold, you kind of need a physical guy like that who can attack the rim, who can maybe step back and shoot a little bit. But what are the Spurs looking for? Because they have surprised before. They have gone international and grabbed a guy who can develop, a guard who might not be ready right away. But in this draft, you need that immediate impact player. Another name thrown out there, maybe Keita Bates-Diop, who is the Big Ten Player of the Year, went through his senior season, so he's a little bit older, a little more experienced, and perhaps could come in and be a little more NBA-ready right away. You're watching Sports Tonight, San Antonio's only nightly 30-minute sportscast with exclusive sports coverage you won't find anywhere else.